thank you for the invitation. I've been asked to talk about using Zoom and, and the road ahead, uh, some of the reflections from York Interfaith Group. York Interfaith Group, we're a relatively small uh, organisation, but we do uh, talk with all the major faith groups in, in York. So I've sort of broken this down in, into three parts, uh, starting off with sort of uh, the pros and cons, essentially. Uh, so what have been the positives? And I've been, I've been listening in the last hour. Um, I think a lot of this um, people now begin to understand because it's a year on and, and Zoom now is no longer the, the, the new thing. Uh, many of us are now well versed in, in using Zoom. But I'll take this through anyway, because uh, these are some of our reflections and I'll um, finish with uh, moving ahead and, and how we'll move ahead as an organization. So some of the positive aspects that, that we've seen of using Zoom and similar technologies is obviously it, it brings together uh, people, albeit virtually. Uh, it's an enabling technology. Uh, you see people, you hear voices, you observe backgrounds. Uh, ultimately, we just have a conversation and that can bring uh, positive mental health and well-being benefits. Uh, certainly, it's really, really interesting as, I, as I'm sat here, uh, although I'm talking to a screen, okay, um, I, feel a, I, I feel a strong relationship, which I otherwise sometimes don't have in a large room. I, I'm only about 50 centimeters away from the screen, but it's almost as if everyone's with me, rather than um, when I'm about five meters away in a large, um, seminar room so that that's an interesting fact that that, that i've observed um, you don't have to be on video okay so you can attend uh, in your pajamas if, if you want to and you don't have to travel uh, which certainly has been a restriction for york interfaith group because our meetings have been um are always on the first tuesday of every month and they've been evening meetings that start at 7 30 in the evening and there have been issues with, with traveling um, in, in the winter, um, and especially for families as well. Um, the venue, okay, we're all in the venue, you know, we're all in a, a, a comfortable venue. Okay, we're all in our sort of privacy of our own four walls. So that, that has, has, a, has a benefit. There's no geographical restriction. Uh, we, we've certainly had visitors, um, guests joining us from Spain uh, regularly for, for our meetings. And we regularly get about 40 uh, attendees at our meetings now, which, which is quite good. Um, there are lots and whizzes and bangs uh, uh, of interactive technology. Uh, just be careful, okay? Sometimes for most of us, it's just a challenge just to connect before we go into breakout rooms and quizzes and boards, etc. So um, we just tend to use uh, this as a chat medium and we very rarely go out into breakout or electronic boards. Um, obviously, um, the person in charge, you've got control uh, of the meeting. So it's really important that uh, the chair knows how to use Zoom because just in case you get rogue entries, uh, the, the chair can act very, very quickly and, and organize that. Um, a huge success of Zoom for us has been Interfaith Week. So our Interfaith Week, uh, we actually had record numbers attending the events during the week because of Zoom and all the all the benefits that I've just mentioned. And we had a count up, and I, I know Dee, Dee Boyle, who's who's the vice chair, Dee's online, and Dee had a count up, and it was over 350 attendees over that week. Uh, for for a small community as York, uh, that's really been impressive. Uh, limitations, and I'm sure uh, we've all encountered some of these limitations. Security is a big issue. Um, we, we we post our Zoom invite by email only to our members with a strict message of do not share to any third party. Um, if anyone wants to join, then they've got to email York Interfaith Group. Uh, and that's been positive. We also keep attendees in a holding room and only when uh, people recognize a name are they allowed in. Um, yeah, technophobia, uh, poor or no internet connection, that's an issue. Accessibility as well, you know, um, we, we've, we've held a seminar on, on faith and disability and within that, we've asked the question, how, how does Zoom work? Um, obviously, we, we're, not making, we're not making full use of subtitles 
or closed captions, which we should do more. I need to. Uh, I need. I need to yeah. bring you to a close. That's I'm right. Gonna, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't use the yeah, privilege of muting you. That would be rude. <laughs> so, so what? I, what I was going to say more is is I think more of it. A lot of it's already been said in terms of the importance of communicating. Um, that that's got to go on. Okay, mm. uh, that's that's a given. So the road ahead for for your York Interfaith Group is a blended model. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a blended model of, of life, uh, virtual, but also virtual live. In the virtual live, we're exploring the City of York Council, where we can have uh, someone talking live and a live audience, but also then that's live streamed to anyone who wants to pick that up. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.